Hello again my dudes, this is Kadima back with another build video for Elden Ring, this time using the Sword of Night and the Claws of Night. This is the dexterity based build, and let's take a look at the equipment for a starter. Sword of Night on the right hand, Claws of Night in the left hand. This allows for the combination of both weapons, just like you can see on the screen that I'm using right now. You can use both of them. And this allows for you to two-hand the Sword of Night, or just have the Claws of Night, Night one on each hand. For the equipment itself, we got the White Mask, we got the Rakashasa Armor, complete set, except for the Helmet, of course. Now, the White Mask increases the damage dealt when bleeding is present in the vicinity. These lovely three pieces increase damage dealt in general, but also increases the damage received. So you. You can always try to look for an alternative for these, but I, you would know me by now, I mean if you watched my other videos I use this armor set since the DLC has been released on pretty much almost all my builds, because I like to take risks and I like to go all in, either I do as much damage as I can and try to get things killed as quickly as possible without really caring about my own safety, and that's how I like to roll in Elden Ring. For the Talismans, of course we are using the Lord of Blood's Exaltation, we are using Rotten Winged Sword Insignia, we are using Shard of Alexander, and we are using Godfrey Icon. Now, here's the difference between PvE and PvP. When playing PvE, I would rather go with Godfrey Icon. The reason being is that this enhances the charge spell's skills uh, damage by 15%. But if you are playing PvP, you are not really going to be able to charge anything. You won't be able to fully charge this, because people are just going to run away from you. So what you can do instead is replace this talisman for the two-handed sword talisman. Of course, this is not going to affect the damage once you equip the claws. If you have the claws, it doesn't really count as two-handing the weapon. And if you are using the weapon, the sword, and the claw simultaneously, this also doesn't really do much. But our number one source of damage is the sword, and it's when it's two-handed, because we want to go for the amazing Ash of War that this weapon allows. Beautiful moveset, and it looks absolutely great, does a tremendous amount of damage, and it, the damage, um, we are going to talk about it, cannot be defended or blocked in its entirety. Let's have a look at what the weapon says. The blade of the sword is only semi-corporeal and thus cannot be guarded against completely. The unique skill is the Witching Hour Slash, which is the, we the uh, Ashes of War I just used. But the good thing about this weapon is that even if you run into a someone who's just turtling and defending completely, and if you do play PvP in the arena, you have probably run into people using the Duelist Shields, and those are a bit tough to fight because they simultaneously block the damage while inf inflicting damage, and that becomes a bit of a pain in the ass. So this sword goes around that problem, and it allows for quite a few damage to go through the shield despite you are taking damage as well. But if you insist, you will most likely do more damage than which you receive. For the claws, uh, it's pretty much the same thing. They do a significant amount of damage and they are also semi-corporeal. Both these weapons scale B with dexterity and that's why we are going all in in dexterity for this build. Now, as for the equipment you can have, for the flask I suggest you use the blood sucking crack tier and the spiked crack tier if you are playing PvE and only if you are about to fight a boss. This increases the damage done whilst claiming your HP and the claim is about 23 uh, HP per second and this lasts for 3 minutes. So if you are going to be fighting small enemies or just big enemies that aren't bosses as you move along, this is not a really good choice because you'll probably run out of um, flasks of Crimson Tears or you're just uh, putting yourself at risk that you don't have to. I suggest changing the Blood Sucking Crack Tear for something else and my suggestion in this case would be to swap that tier for um, the one that allows uh, either uh, this one 
which makes more likely to break enemy stances in the mixed physique, or the thorny crack tier, which again does the same thing, makes consecutive attacks grow stronger. So the more you attack, the stronger and the more damage you will be doing. But if you are about to fight a boss, blood sucking crack tier is probably the best option. Just remember to be careful and manage your flask of crimson tears accordingly. Now, let's review the weapons uh, when it comes to their movesets. The katana itself has a nice uh, slash up and down um, with the R1. With the R2, it does a two hit per pressing of the button, and you can actually charge this, and you can hear by the noise that it inflicts way more damage. Now, for the claws, the claws has a lovely moveset as well, the slashes are both vertical and horizontal, the R2s are again combinations of two hits. Now, the web, the Ashes of War of the Claws is an amazing um, ranged attack. This causes tremendous amounts of bleed and interrupts enemies as well. So, if you are fighting someone in PvP and they are about to cast spells, you can always just stun them and interrupt them so they stop with that nonsense. Um, and Or if you know they are about to experience the bleed, just try to hit them from afar it's always a good strategy as well. Now, other thing I suggest, especially for PvP, is that you have Exalted Flesh, this will boost physical attack, and your Mimic, if you're playing PvE, this is a must-have, because this guy loves to two-hand the sword, and he l absolutely loves to spam the Ashes of War, so both you and the Mimic sp spamming the Ashes of War, this sword is an absolute thing to behold, and you are about to see it right now in the boss fight that I'm going to give you as an example. And you have guessed it, it's the Black Knight again, the usual suspect. So here we are to kill our lovely Black Knight. As you can see I had already summoned the Mimic, I used the Exalted Flesh, but I decided to also sprinkle my Mimic with a little bit of an aroma to make him a bit stronger. Now, all you have to do is put the sword in both your hands, Use the flask and check how this guy gets absolutely destroyed by me and the Mimic. Both of us just doing the Ashes of War and guess what happens? He is dead that quickly. Poor guy. <laughs> now let's go for some PvP examples. Um, this guy was actually some of one of my uh, first fights using the this weapon and this setup with this build. Um, I was still trying to get used to the best way to use the Ash of War. I was trying uh, hard to actually get charged, um, fully charged Ashes of War. And as the more I experienced with the weapon, the more I got used to um, using it in the arena, the more I realized that that's not the way to go. What you actually want to do is just tap the L2, not really charge it, because charging it in the arena is not really going to happen on ex maybe the odd rare occasion it happens, but not usually, no. But this guy was using the great uh, sword of uh, Malakath or whatever his name is um, you just have to stay away from it because the weapon art can be quite dangerous if you stay inside the range I managed to actually semi charge the L2 for the kill uh, but that was a lucky shot to be honest now for the next guy um, he actually managed to put a, a bit of a fight um, he was using this weapon um, which I, I fought him before so I was aware of what happen, weapon he is using. I was trying to just punish um, some of his dodges. But then he decided to change things up and guess what he went with? The dueling shield. That's right. The Probably the only weapon that damages that shield is the one I'm using. So I was actually trying to have him run out of stamina or at least not have that much stamina for when I start attacking because I wanted him to be punished and maybe try to break his guard so I was waiting for my opportunity and then he started spamming and that's when I do the spamming myself 
And there you are. GG, buddy. The weapon goes through the shield. For this one, um, again, don't forget the uh, Exalted Flesh. He was using the Madness Spear, which, to be honest, we played, t uh, we fought twice. I won one, he won the other one. Because he just genuinely stunlocked me and I couldn't do anything about it. But in this case, I was trying to punish his rolls, wasn't being very successful. But did you see that? A simple R2 attack, it does 600 damage. This sword is nasty when you have 80 stamina. I tried to get him backstab, but didn't really uh, connect. So I went for the Ashes of War and then finished with the running R2 poke. Now... This guy, I lost count of how many times I fought this guy, and in all honesty, he's uh, ahead of me in wins. He has beaten me more than I have beaten him. But I decided that this was a good fight because I actually managed to counter his style uh, quite well using this sword. He normally play, plays quite aggressively. I don't know if he was also trying to get used to his new build, but I realized that my best chances in this case was to try to stay on top of him and baiting him into attacking me so I can then punish his attacks. I managed to get him with the Ash of War followed by a two-handed R1. As for this guy, again, I have fought him quite a few times um, I'm pretty sure he has beaten me as well um, but he's using the combination of a big albert with a small axe those can be nasty because they actually connect and combine quite well allowing for diversity in your attacks I was trying to outspace him but it wasn't going so well because I wasn't able to connect my attacks he wasn't able to connect either. This tells me the connection was actually quite good because we were both able to dodge um, accordingly. But then when I finally managed to punish him, this is what it looked like. There you go. Punish and then the running R2. GG, buddy. Good match. As for the next one, this guy... Um, again, don't forget the Exalted Flesh. <laughs> this guy was using the Sword of Solitude, which is actually one of my first weapons I used in this DLC. I am yet to make a build with it, uh, because I actually want to um, take some time going with the sword and finding the best way to use it. But I fully charged this L2 and oh my god, it was devastating. It was just beautiful. What a win. Next opponent. Um, Again, fought this guy quite a few times, but um, I think he was learning his lesson. He realized that <laughs> being extremely aggressive was probably the best way to defeat me because um, he was playing uh, quite passively uh, in previous rounds. He did manage to hit me here. I'm still not get used to the second um, wave of those Ashes of War. I'm not doing so well with those, but I will eventually learn. Um, I, I was having no room to breathe, but then I finally managed to land the first running R2, and then this is when I got a little bit lucky, I gotta say. I managed to land that perfectly release L2 Ashes of War attack. Now this guy, um, he actually... Um, I thought he was going to give me a really hard time because he has heavy armor, but he started casting spells and immediately spamming uh, Ashes of War with uh, Mesmer's Spear and then he got me thinking this guy probably is more than halfway down his FPs so he shouldn't have that many at attacks left with the full weapon art so I decided to go offensive spamming R1 to punish his rolls and this is when I realized he ran out of FPs he probably didn't, so I punished him immediately with two uh, Ash of War sequences, and I got the win. Now, for this guy, this is actually probably one of my favorite duels using this sword, I gotta say, because uh, this guy was using Quick Step uh, whilst using the um, new weapon for the feet, uh, which allows us to kick. 
I was hoping that he would not have jumped uh, so early and then I would have been able to interrupt him mid-air. Uh, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. But he was being quite careful with his playstyle. Uh, no, he was not giving me uh, much room to poke in and punish him. But I did land a hit here and there until I finally managed to bait him. And this is when I finally got the win. I go in with a roll. I charge. This works as a bait. I go forward and then punish his roll. And here we go. Dun dun dun. GG, brother. <laughs> the first one was just to trick you. Right, I only have a couple more examples left. Um, but this was actually another fight against someone using the foot uh, weapon, which, I mean, everybody uses it the same way. It's mostly just spamming running attacks and jumping attacks, uh, which can be quite punishing. I'm not saying the weapon isn't good. It is very good, but it's basically the same thing to make it um, useful. So here I managed to get the kind of charged uh Ashes of War, I use the fully charged as bait and then I release, the, I release the O2 immediately for the second one to get the win. Now this is going to be a quick one, um, I remember this duel perfectly. This guy was being extremely aggressive but he wasn't spacing properly. So I was trying to get my way around him, I managed to land one hit. He's using the Fire Knight Greatsword which is extremely scary in PvP. But I'm, main, I'm being able to find the space to poke and to punish. I use this as bait. He doesn't fall for it, but he does get hit with the very last swing. So I decided to finish the job and just use the claws for the shooting uh, daggers. Now for this one, I don't know what this guy was trying to do. Maybe uh, he hasn't played in the arena for a very long time. I can see he doesn't really have any DLC weapons, so I'm not really sure what's going on with this guy. But I decided to punish his jumping attack with a backstab, and I immediately charge the L2 fully for the win. What a devastating attack. Now this is going to be the last one guys, what a sweaty combat. This was probably my hardest win so far in the arena, particularly using this build. Uh, I gotta admit, I get very confused with people that just constantly crouch. I don't particularly understand uh, the mechanic behind it. I don't think this should be a thing in PvP. But it's it's how the game is. I can't I can't blame him for using such um, a playstyle. I managed to land a couple of hits with my Ash of War. He does try to get me with the Ash of War of the Meteoric Sword. I am being a bit lucky here, but he I d I don't know if he's trolling me or he's just not too sure about attacking me. I managed to land a couple of hits. But his constant crouching, honestly, it absolutely drives me crazy. I can't stand that. <laughs> well, well done for doing it, though. You do know how to aggravate me in a duel, I gotta admit. I decided to go with the, the claws, um, and that's the reason why I chose this one for the last fight. Because it's the only time I went full on with the claws. And I managed to get the win because I'm going to spam R1 to his face until I win. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I do appreciate your support. It means a lot to me. Please subscribe if you haven't just yet. Leave a like or any comments down below. I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio!